since the end of your childhood, whenever that is, in the first five, six, seven years, nothing new has occurred. Since the end of your childhood, nothing new has occurred. Now, when you hear this, what are you probably thinking? What are you talking about? My balls dropped. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Um, now, <laughs> nothing new has occurred. No, you're like, well, of course, I've grown up. All these new experiences. I got a job now. I moved out. A lot of new things have occurred. Yes, on the surface. But looking beneath the surface, has anything really changed? The physical is changing, but is it possible that that is just an illusion? Okay, let's take this example. In a group of friends, everyone has a certain role. If we take, say, four people, five people, you all have a role. You're either the main person, the leader, you're the number two, you're the class clown, the funny one, you're the loser, the bottom person who, you know, people don't mind having around, but you always have to go out of your own way to be invited to different things. Like say it's us four, and say you're the loser. <laughs> like, say I'm the loser, it's us four. If right now it's like, let's go see a movie, the leader, number two, class clown, we'll just say eh, random and loser. Let's go see a movie. Fuck yeah, let's go see a movie. Now, for us, like class clown might joke around like, yeah, let's go see this thing and fucking joke around. We're gonna stay a little quiet because our opinion doesn't matter as much. They're gonna decide. And then whatever they decide, we're like, okay. We never express it because there's not the, the status. We don't have that rank. Now, for me, if I'm like the loser of the group, you won't mind me coming along but it won't make a difference to you whether I come along or not. You have friends like that or you might resonate with this where it's like, I'll have to text you guys like, hey, hey, I won't necessarily text the leader because that's too out of rank, but I might text you like, hey, where's the movie? What time are we going? Oh, can I come? Oh, wait for me, wait for me. You always have to catch up. And of course when I'm there, they're like, oh, you're here, cool. But no one's gonna be like, hey, where's Julian? We can't have fun without him. Whether I'm there or not, it doesn't matter. Okay, now, we all have this role, we take it on during our childhood, but it's funny how it's so fucking hard to escape it, no? We think that when we grow up it changes, but somehow you always find yourself in the same role, whether it's with your friends, your new friends, or at work. Even if you move, you find yourself in the same role. How many times have we heard like, when I move it all change? Like say you're even someone who has no friends, you think it's gonna change when you move? Bullshit. You might delay it, you might have the first initial encounters, but eventually you will find a way back to your spot. If you're the class clown, you might delay it, put on a certain front, but eventually that new social circle, that new group of people will start labeling you as the class clown. You find your way back. Do you have experiences like this? Like when I move it'll be different. Nope, it's the same. So yes, it's new friends, a new social circle, a new environment but the same underlying dynamics are still at play. Okay, if you think about relationships, same thing, new partners, same relationships, same dynamics. We hear it all the time. Why do I keep falling for this type of person? The person who cheats on me, the person who leaves me, people who are crazy, they're a psycho, so much drama. Oh, people where it's so flat. Same type of relationships, same type of partners. For some reason, we resonate with that. Now this gets a little crazy, by the way. Um, if you link it to your childhood, you could say that during your childhood you form your, your concept of what a relationship is, uh, of what love is. And it will tend to come from whoever is raising you. So you'll look at them, say your parents, and say your parents are high drama, there's a lot of fighting. You're gonna most likely will find yourself in relationships where there's a lot of drama and you will not feel attraction for people where there is no drama. It's crazy, consciously you're like, I want a healthy relationship, but you just don't resonate with it. When there's a healthy partner, there's, you just can't, you can't get it up, or you, know, or you don't drip. You're just like, meh, <laughs> for real, you know? How often do we look and like logically it makes perfect sense to be with that person based on what we consciously want, but we get drawn to the destructive person. Or if your parents say divorced, you may fall for relationships where people just keep leaving you, or it's long distance, or they're not available, or they're already in a relationship and you're for them. 
if your parents' relationship was very flat, very friend to friend, you might always lose that initial spark. And all your relationships are like you're hanging out with a buddy, like a roommate. Crazy. New people, same dynamics. It's the same thing over and over and over again. The same with our self-worth, how we feel about ourselves. We can change the external. You can get more money, better partner, friends, even move, but it's still the same you underneath it all. The same patterns. If you're, here's my favorite one. Let's just say you don't have money or you have a very limited amount of money. The way you're gonna cope with yourself to numb yourself or to distract yourself is you might play PS4 or Xbox. You save up, you buy your fucking Xbox and you play some games, right? That's the dynamic. Now, say you make more money. Does anything really change? Or instead of using an Xbox to distract yourself, you're now traveling around the world, going to amazing parties, going to cool islands, doing cool activities. The physical changed, but all that really changed is you now have more resources to distract yourself, right? Or if you numb yourself. When I first moved to LA, I would drink quite a lot. I was quite self-destructive. And I was so broke that I remember buying at uh, CVS, like these plastic jugs of vodka. You ever see those? Like these huge gallon jugs, like the shittiest vodka. And that was me. Now say you took that same me and you gave me a million bucks. You're like, here you go, kid, go have fun. Would anything change? No, all the money does is now have more resources to buy top shelf vodka as opposed to the CVS vodka. So if you look at your life and you look at the different patterns in your life, it's crazy how Nothing really changes, does it? The same thing. Even different key characters. How often do you see, for example, your father in someone else, or your mother in someone else? Like someone takes like your father role in your life, or the mother more nurturing role. We do that too. Different people, same roles we project. It's the same play, the same tragedy, the same dramatic screen play over and over and over again. That's the movie that's your life. Okay, until you get to the cause, until you dive back to your childhood and you identify what has perhaps been imprinted on you and you free yourself from it. Otherwise, you're gonna keep repeating the same thing over and over and over again. You've probably seen me draw this before in some videos where this is your, you could say, external situation, the physical world, here's the mental world, and here's the core experience that is you. This, you could say, is where all this shit gets stored during your childhood. Now here, we try to fiddle around with the external. More money, more validation, so on and so forth. Travel. But nothing really gets to that. Everything's changing out here, but our experience remains the same. As you go a little deeper, you're like, well, let's focus on the mental. Read more, you know, willpower, positive thinking, so on and so forth. But even then, nothing really gets there, because this comes first. This affects that and that. This is at the cause, and we never get to the cause. I was identified as the um, self-destructive artist from a young age, and a lot of my patterns were building a certain amount of success and popping it. And I can trace that all the way back to my childhood, just different situations, whether it was relationships. I couldn't have a relationship go well or be very nice, because otherwise I'm like, it's flat, it's boring. I just don't resonate with it and I'd pop it. I would self-destruct all the time. I'm growing. No, you're not. Even self-sabotage. If you look at your life here, you're growing old, things changing, and we think that we're just going up, right? You might have hit some little bumps in the road, but overall you're going up. However, more often than not, we stay beneath a certain ceiling. We build up, as soon as we pass our ceiling of success, we fuck shit up. We're like, not worthy. And then we're like, let's build it back up. Not worthy. We have the illusion that we're progressing, but you're just staying under this fucking line. Right? You just keep being pulled back. Pulled back to what you know. Pulled back to 
what happened during your childhood. <laughs> this is why even like New Year's resolutions don't work. You ever find that funny? How we even laugh when we hear New Year's resolutions? Like, <laughs> like it's a joke. It's like Santa Claus. Like, those aren't real. We all know it doesn't real. That's why we all, we all laugh at it. New Year's resolutions. No one ever sticks to them. Okay. So, something to bring your awareness to. Identify the patterns. Identify the script that is on repeat. Identify what you keep being pulled back to. And then, learn to let go of it. Dive into the internal and learn how to release. This is why I keep preaching release past trauma, release negative programming, release all that shit that is keeping you trapped that happened to you during your childhood. Because right now you're trapped, you're a fucking slave to it. And this will freak you out. We think that we have, um, that we're, we're, we're authentic beings and we're living a life of our own design, are you? I'm sure you've heard that saying, if you don't have a plan for you, someone else does, right? You know who has a plan for you? All that fucking trauma. And when I say trauma, I do wanna make this clear, all of us have trauma. Now, we're conditioned to believe that trauma is going to war. You're like, I didn't go to war, I don't have trauma, my leg didn't get blown off. Now yes, that is traumatic, getting your fucking leg blown off is extremely traumatic. Abuse is traumatic, violence is traumatic. You know what else is traumatic? A mother looking away. That is traumatic. You're like, what? Why? Because as a kid, it depends on your perception of the world, how you experience it. Being lost in a grocery store is traumatic. As an adult, you know it's fine, but not as a kid. As a kid, it feels like the end of the world. Being shamed in class is traumatic. It feels like you will die. Why? Because we believe, it's not necessarily true, but that's how we interpret it, that we're only loved when we're approved of. And the way we're taught how to fit into a society is that we're rewarded when we're good and we're punished when we're bad. So there are times where we're not approved of. Now, it's not us who are not approved of, it's the action. But we don't see it that way. Or like, at this moment in time, like my mother looking away, she doesn't love me. Now I'm a kid. Can I survive on my own? Can I go make money in the world? Fuck no, I die if I'm abandoned. On my own I die, I need her to survive. If she doesn't love me, why won't she just get rid of me and abandon me? She could. And now your survival instinct kicks in. It's like, oh shit, you could die right now. Traumatic. We live in an uncertain world. Just turn on the news, what do you see? Chaos, terror, suffering. Things are changing so fast that your head is spinning. You know the feeling, being pulled in different directions by your friends, your family, mainstream media, not knowing what to do or who to believe. Did you ever stop and ask yourself, how did your life get this way? I felt so much shame when it comes to being me. And now I don't feel that shame anymore. I had no way of being able to deal with that pain and for the first time in my life, I finally feel an inner stillness and peace in myself. I didn't even know what was happening. Like, my hands were just shaking. And it was just like me being my authentic self. Most of us live lives of escapism. Anything to cope with this feeling eating us up inside. Distracting ourselves with dumb things on TV. Numbing ourselves with junk food, alcohol, cigarettes, and drugs. Is this the way life was meant to be? Or is there perhaps another way? It's been the first time in over 10 years uh, since my dad died that I actually felt like I did before. I've decided to take a stance for good, for love, for authenticity, and I've created a movement of people dedicated to raising the vibe. A movement dedicated to doing something about this, and it's called Transformation Mastery Academy. That was amazing, just being able to finally find that that root reason. I really want to thank each and every one of you out of the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys. Now I'm not some fake guru promising you overnight results. What I promise you here is a tribe of people to help support you and guide you along this journey. In Transformation Mastery Academy, you'll no longer be alone. You'll no longer feel lost. You will be given the roadmap to true, permanent personal transformation. Enough with this fake life of quiet desperation. Step into your truth and join the movement.